So I've been trying to figure out a way to seal off this a little bit. My thought originally, I took some gasket material and I stuck it in there with some magnets. It didn't really do the best of job. I, I have it tucked back now so you can see the daylight in there. And then I said, well, what if I cut little serrations into the gasket material? That stuff sucks. I mean, it just falls apart. So what I thought of was this. This is a door sweep with a brush on the bottom. It comes with, uh, it comes with this white channeling that it sits inside of. Nice white channeling. But my thought, my initial thought, hear me out on this, my initial thought is I can cut this in half. I can bend it to the shape I need. And maybe if I get lucky, just maybe, I'll be able to use those same magnets and just stick the steel end to the magnets and have it just kind of ride along for the ride, you know, and then go along with the ride. Um, I don't, I don't, uh, Put my blade off on any kind of crazy angles very often so i mean this is more just to you know this is more just for rip cuts and cross cuts and nothing crazy fancy whatever so this should i mean in theory work very well for sealing off the airflow so what i'm going to do is i want to get a couple of baseline measurements just the way that my dust collector is i'm still waiting on my takeoff but I'll just grab a wind uh, wind measurement with the with the gasket material off, with the gasket material in place, and then with the brush material in place, and see how much extra airflow I can get by sealing that off. And the nice thing about the brush is that even if I were to use any kind of miter angles, once I get the brush in place. It'll just kind of flop around as I'm making adjustments to my blade angle. I think it's winner, winner, chicken dinner. So we'll see. So a quick little nip with my snips. Cut it right in half. Thing bends very, very easily. So that, so far, I mean, it's looking all right. I think we're going to have ourselves a, have ourselves a winner. I'm going to have to bend it a little bit just to get the brushes to touch a little better, you know. Don't want to really cross swords, but you want to make sure you seal off the gap. So, I mean, as I, I mean, if I move it, I, more than likely I have to trim this thing anyway. I mean, just to get it to conform to the inside of the cabinet. But, I mean, just, just grabbing it by hand and just giving her a quick yank. It's not so bad. Not so bad. And my alternate thought is that if I give that plastic a little bit of nip with the snips, it'll bend enough to conform to the shape of the brush and I can stick it into the cabinet. I'd like to see how well this works before I commit to it but stick it into the cabinet with some double side tape for the time being and if I really like it I could epoxy the plastic in place. I mean, that's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to be one and done. It'll just be in, out, and over, like my sex life. All right, so right now, without doing anything, I've got 413.4 feet per minute. That's with the little curtain thing pushed back. So essentially, it would be like wide open. So I'm gonna uh, put the brushes in, see if it makes a difference. All right, so because of my my uh, router box here. I have to take the entire door off to get into where I need, but I got it all up in place. You can see I've got a little bit of play in there as the blade goes around if I need to do a miter cut. But for the most part, I mean, it's it's sealed off pretty good. The, uh, the center line's a little off, but I only have it in there with double stick tape at the moment. I figure if the tape holds long enough, then winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, if not, I will just 
See if you can get an angle in here. All right, so I'll just uh, goop it up with epoxy and clamp it in place. I'll get the center up a little bit better. I don't know, maybe I'll try to make some adjustments. It just cost me another piece of double stick tape, if anything. Uh, but there it is. That's, uh, that's what I was aiming for, and that's what I'm going to get. So I'm going to put the door back on, fire it up again, grab a measurement up at the top, and see if this uh, see if this does me any in effectiveness over beauty I put a piece of plywood here last time I took this door off I uh, stuck a couple of wood screws in there but they're not quite the right ones for my application so I'm gonna have to swap those out one of these days but I had this weather stripping I've had a f I've had this stuff for I don't even know probably a decade or more I put that along the top right now when I put the door on I'll see how well that seals for the for the most part, I've had a piece of plywood just draped across there for the longest time, so I don't see there being an issue with airflow or anything like that. So my thought is I'm forever using this thing sporadically, you know, for a rip cut here, rip cut there. I'm not going to overheat the motor. Plus, while I've got the dust collection on, it's not going to, it's not going to, you know, be lacking for air because there's going to be air going through the throat plate. So let's see how this all comes together. All right, moment of truth. I got the cover back on. Still don't have this attached, but that's neither here nor there. Fire it up. Let's get a reading. See if my change has made any, uh, any difference here. Holy shit. Look at that. I did not move that thing at all. I just gained. Wow, you could feel it. 531, originally 413. Just that simple modification. Holy shit. That's fucking incredible. All right. I stand corrected. I just realized that blast gate was partially closed. 610. You could feel how much better that is. Holy shit. That's it, man. That's... That's the trick right there. Cover up all your all your open holes. There you go. Weather stripping's in there nice. Wow. That's cool. Alright, I'm a happy guy.